itself or was a problem for me, I ended up being really unwell. My main concern was when I'd spoken about this on social media, the hundreds and hundreds of messages that I had from women of all different ages and some men as well that were sort of speaking from their partner's experiences that kind of had said, this has been a massive problem for us or I didn't know where to turn to and it went from varying degrees of severity of that they put loads of weight on or you know that they had lost their sex drive to it had triggered severe severe depression in me I was threatening to cut my own implant out of my arm in the doctor's surgery I was prescribed the pill and then I didn't get on with it and then was tried to be prescribed depressants and uh, antidepressants at the top of that and I didn't think that was the solution and I didn't really feel like I had any information I didn't have any support and I didn't have enough time in any, I was going to speak to my GP or whatever and I was kind of given a couple of options but I didn't know there was any other choice to kind of what I was being given and it kind of really made me think that as women are we taken seriously when it's like a women's issue or are we kind of patted on the head a little bit and sort of said well you know it's a side effect you're going to have to just kind of get on with it and I think a lot of women do, I think you sort of think well better the devil I know, I know I'm going to you know, maybe I'm going to put a bit of weight on, I'm going to have bad skin, and you just accept that. And I think what really hit home for me is that just because you might not end up in hospital with something, if it's affecting your quality of life, then that's really important. And there must be a way we can kind of get a conversation going about that to say, you don't have to just accept that. You can ask questions, there are other options, and you're not on your own in feeling about this because. I don't really think like I've got good girlfriends and I'm looking around the room now and I'm imagining that you all do too, but how much time would you actually ever spend talking to your friends about your choices of contraception, how you do and don't get on, your own sort of sexual health and taking control of that? I imagine you would spend more time talking about what you're going to wear on a night out or if you're going on holiday or if you've watched some kind of trash TV and, you know, I think that was what really struck me. So I was really, really pleased with Superdrug. We're like, yeah, we completely agree. We need to start getting this conversation. We need to make sure that women feel as in control as they possibly can do because it is your your body, it is our lives. And if something is making you feel less than 100%, then you don't have to accept that. That isn't okay. So we've got an amazing panel. So um, I've really, everyone's kind of here for their own, they've all had their own experiences, their own opinions, or they're particularly like, specified in, in fields that kind of all relate to this. Um, for children, after children, and I think that we, when the super drug conducted some research, it actually, there was a huge discrepancy in kind of the awareness of what was actually available and to who, and I think, how many of you here have heard of the hormonal ring? Sounds like a secret society. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie <laughs> first. Yeah. First, first, first rule of the hormonal ring is never talked about. So only 29% of people had, had heard of that. We then had only, but 41% of people had heard about and understood that spermicide could be used as contraception. With 44% had heard of the cap but not used it. And also, I think we're all quite sceptical about try new things um, if you kind of get stuck in your way you think you have to I mean I you was on the pill for quite a clearly not always on the pill I've got four children <laughs> but for quite a long time and so for them to change to something else was was quite a big step for me and I didn't really know where to go with it because I was a bit like well I'm married and I've got children so I don't think I really want any more children because I'll be like the old woman that lived in a shoe <laughs> um, so I tried the coil and it was kind of like a bit of a tick box. I didn't even think of anything else. I knew I didn't want the implant because I didn't like the idea of it. So I didn't really know what my options were on that. I think that seems to be a big thing is women are very skeptical to try new things. And maybe that becomes comes from the fact that we don't really know what our options are. And also are aware that if it doesn't work, we can try something else. Like you, you have a right to go, this isn't really working for me. And whether that's because you've lost your sex drive, that's just as important as if it's making you feel really ill because it's going to affect your relationship, it's going to affect your self-esteem and everything. It's not it's not just a health issue. Um, so, why do you think that is? As a doctor, what would you think are kind of the, the boundaries? Why are people scared to try different things? Um, I think you hit the nail on the head uh, in terms of 
often the conversation around contraception is either when you first start having sex, um, so you know at, at the very beginning when most doctors will usually just straight out say try the pill. But if I'm honest with you, yeah. that's, that's the thing that most doctors are like, will suggest to a lot of new young, uh, young people. Then the next time that people need to think about their contraception is just after they've had a baby. No. <laughs>
unevenly balanced in that way. But how many men complain about condoms not feeling great? And I'm like, hey, it's abortion, coils being injected out of my uterus, pregnancy, all this stuff, like, just put one on. I also get that, like, women like some, you know, women are fully within their right to. Putting the femidome on my head. But men, what I've never understood is that the woman gets pregnant, it is her choice whether she sees the pregnancy through or not. And what I'll say to my male friends is, you get a woman pregnant. You have no say. Right so. But you will be culpable for 18 years of child support. Like fucking take some responsibility. Even if you just have to be selfish. Let's say for a second you don't care about what happens. Be selfish for yourself and try and take some control. And yeah, actually let's empower the men to have more control. Wouldn't it be great if like, oh I just imagine it. One man stand. I mean always use condoms on one that stands. But also <laughs> you on the pill. Oh, you on the pill. We're both on the pill. <laughs> Superdrug and sorry, this is my drink that was in my goodie bag. Um, it was a really interesting event actually. It was really interesting to hear about sort of all the different methods of contraception that don't really get talked about. It's kind of like the copper coil, and I think there was one called the ring. Um, well, that sounds more scary than it is. But there's there was around 15 different options that you can go through, and normally, obviously, the options that we get told about is the contraceptive pill and the normal coil, maybe the implant. There's not kind of much talk around any of the other ones, so it's really interesting to kind of hear about all of those and hear about benefits and how many people have them and just sort of get a bit more of an insight into a wide group of people talking about contraception rather than just talking about it like to your friends or to your parents or maybe to your doctor. Um, and the resounding thing was just kind of we need more options and we need to know exactly what works for us and what doesn't and we need to be more outspoken about when things don't work for us so if they're causing kind of headaches, uh, general unwellness feeling and you know it's to do with whatever contraception you're on if you're trying something out and it doesn't work very well or you just feel that it's not the one for you then it's all about getting people to feel more confident in coming forward and more confident in kind of talking about the issues that they have and being confident enough to say no this contraception isn't for me and this one's not working for me and maybe I need to try something else without feeling like they're going to be told they're going to be called a hormonal stressed out hypochondriac woman at the end of the day because that is still a thing unfortunately 
but it was amazing to hear from the whole panel and to hear from everyone and hopefully it will just become a more accepted topic and people will talk about it more and there'll be more um, more types of contraception and more types of contraception for men as well that will be available to people so that we don't always necessarily have to carry the burden of worrying about contraception all the time. Wouldn't it be great, like um, the panel said in in the event, wouldn't it be great if there was a world where where the woman says to the guy, are you on the pill? And he turns back and says yes, and he says, are you on the pill? And she says yes, and everybody's on the pill and it's all great. <laughs> or everyone's on some kind of co contraception anyway. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful at all. If I can find any resources to looking at other things to do with the uh, blogs that we talked about today, any sort of contraception feedback, anything else I can, any more resources I can find online, I will link those in the description box below. Thank you so much to Superdrug for having me and I will see you in the next video. Bye!